All right, so we have finished for now, for the deadline, um, our creature scape. Proving ground number one, at least this part of it. I ended with vignetting. Vignetting is just darkening all around the edges. And that helps focus the attention of your viewer where you want it to be focused. We're also doing that with the texture overlays. Right? It's a very common technique in photography. Even before digital, you would burn around the edges or sometimes dodge around the edges just to focus the attention. And then, of course, we had clone stamp. If there are just things you just want to replace and change, I use it on a separate layer. I affect all layers. And for instance, if I don't like this bright highlight being there, I can just use clone stamp to knock that down. Okay, so once it's done, save it. This is saved as your proving ground. You don't want to accidentally copy over a previous assignment. Right? And now we are going to say file, save a copy out of Photoshop. And we're just going to save it as a JPEG. There's no transparency needed for this. JPEG, because these are quite large files, cropped down, allows us to keep the quality low. And I'm going to keep it at 10. It's still over 5 megabytes at 10, but that's, that's not too huge for Canvas. And then I can close it. I can close Photoshop, and I can go to the Canvas course. And this is what I post. So we need three things in order to fill out this proving ground rubric to show our first creative problem solving skill. You always want to put your name and then we have to submit the thing we've been working on so, so long, which is this creaturescape. This creaturescape project, this JPEG, will demonstrate that you are able to match your creature's anatomy and the angle of that anatomy to the landscape and that you will be able to match the lighting on your creature to the landscape. And that's the only thing we're checking on this. The cooler it looks, the better. But the only parts of the rubric that apply to this proving ground, it's the second part of the rubric here where it says match the light direction and the angle of anatomy. I can then shrink it so it's not so huge, but not too tiny as well. And then next, the other parts of the rubric, and this is new. First one, we need to accurately identify the resolution and the physical format. So we can do that within Photoshop by going to image, image size, but we can also just take our JPEG, double click it, open it in any kind of viewing program, and on, on a Mac it's preview, and then just go to Tools Adjust Size. Not so we can change its size, but we can so that we can see its pixels. So this shows us that this is 18, and I'm just gonna round here, 18 by 13 inches by 350 pixels per inch. So I'm gonna write that in. You do it underneath it or on top of it. So 18 inches usually get the horizontal dimension first by 13 inches at 350 pixels per inch, PPI. Now I'm not done because the other thing I need to do besides just giving those that information, the resolution and the physical format, is I have to say what type of resolution this is. Out of the two types, there is screen resolution and there is print resolution. If it is at the desired physical dimensions, which in this class is 8 by 10 or larger, at over 300 pixels per inch, so 300 pixels or more, then it is good for print resolution. That's the higher standard. <laughs> so I'm just going to put print resolution. If it were below 300 pixels per inch and above 72 pixels per inch, then it's going to be screen resolution. And that might happen because you cropped down or changed it, right? Okay. 
Okay. So, if this said instead 150, then what I would actually want you to do is to show, well, what's the largest screen resolution it can be? If it can't be 8 by 10 inches at 300 minimum for print resolution, how big can your screen resolution be? So what I want you to do then is uncheck resample image. Well, first, well, yeah, I don't want to degrade my image. So uncheck resample image, and then you put 72 in for the resolution. And that will show you your screen resolution. So my image, because it's bigger than screen resolution, would actually be 87, really 88 inches by 65 inches on a screen. That's big. Yeah, this is just preview. You can also do this in Photoshop by going to image, image size. So you should tell me what it, what it is. And then if it's good enough for print resolution or screen resolution. Okay, next, the last part of the proving ground. Is you're going to explain how your creature is intended to interact with its environment. Just a, a few sentences. Accounting for atmospheric and practical concerns. How does your creature breathe, shelter, and eat in this environment? Those kind of things. And really, you get to say whatever you want. You can use your creature's name. You can say what the species is. It just gets you thinking about it like you have been. So this species of rock slug lives exclusively on the sugary vapors of the candied landscape and excretes a red uh, sticky syrup that fertilizes the soil. Why not, right? Let's see. It has no natural predators and hibernates in the uh, vegan season for many months. Let's see, other things to think about. Its breath is toxic to other creatures and acts as a protective defense. So that its large, uh, let's see, roaming areas, like great grazing areas, I'll say, of atmosphere go largely. Un, uh, what's the word? Yeah. Untrespassed upon. Yeah. Just untrespassed. I think you can get away with that. And that's where spell check comes in for me. <laughs> no, we can't get rid of it. Largely free of trespassers. Okay, and I think that's enough to give me a sense. I could say um, something directly about its relationship with the rocks or the licorice or something, but I don't need to. I just need to kind of understand how this creature survives in this environment and flourishes. And then we are done.